exercise 4.3 will lead us to learning objective 3 and learning objective 5. So let's see what's being asked of us here. Computing and using the contribution margin ratio, computing the break-even point. All right. In March, Mitchell Limited had sales of 250,000. So I always stop when I get to these sort of things and I start saying, okay, well, I don't want to look at the information in sentence format. I want to look at it in a format I'm familiar with. So right away, I'll put sales, 250,000, and I'll put 100% beside it, and I'll keep reading. Sales of $250,000, total variable expense of 190. Okay, so let's put that in now. Less my variable expense of 190. Gives me a $60,000 contribution margin. And while I'm here, I'll take the 190 divided by 250. I get 76%, which leaves me 24% here. Let's keep reading. Total fixed expense of $36,000, less my fixed costs of $36,000, leaves me an operating income of $24,000. Now, you'll notice I haven't even got to the question yet, so you're probably wondering, what am I doing with all this? Here's what I'm doing is I'm taking information given to me in sentence format and I'm putting that same information in a format that looks a lot easier to work with. Now, if I'm asked a question, what's the operating income? I, al I already know. What's my contribution margin? I already know. What's my contribution margin ratio? There it is right there. So you can ask me anything now and all I have to do is look at this and answer it. I don't have to figure it out each and every time. Organized data answers questions on its own. So let's go ahead and see what's being asked of us now. Number one, what is the company's contribution margin ratio? Look at that, contribution margin ratio. There it is right there. We've already figured it out. Look how easy that was, right? Let's go on to the second one. Second question asks us, using the contribution margin ratio, calculate the break-even level of sales in dollars. Okay, break-even level of sales in dollars is we always have our fixed costs divided by, and this will be divided by the contribution margin ratio. Our fixed costs we have already identified as 36,000. We've already got our contribution margin ratio of 0.24. This will give us 150,000. There's our break even level in sales. Number three, estimate the change in the company's operating income if it increased its total sales by 20,000. So, number three, what we're going to do is we're going to increase our sales $20,000. But since we have a contribution margin ratio of 24%, this means that for every dollar sales go up, our contribution margin will increase by 24 cents. Since our fixed costs stay the same, whatever it increases by automatically adds to operating profit. So all we do is we take our increase in sales, 20,000, we multiply it by our contribution margin, and we know our contribution margin will increase $4,800. So this 60,000 will become 64,800. With the same 36,000 in fixed cost, that full 4,800 automatically goes down to the bottom line. There's the answer for number three. There's the process of thinking about how to answer number three. Exercise 4.4 covers learning objective number four, and let's see what we have. Changes in variable costs, fixed costs, selling price, and volume. So a lot of things going on here. Data from Moorfield Corporation are shown below. And what we'll do is we'll just replicate that so that we uh, so that everybody can see it on the screen rather than looking up and down. Selling price, variable cost, contribution margin. We're told our selling price per unit is $90. Our variable cost per unit is 63. So that our contribution margin per unit is 27. When we look at it in terms of percent, we have 100% on sales. 70% is our variable expense ratio. 30% is our contribution margin ratio. So this is what we're. Uh, this is the data that we're given. So let's look at the question that we're being asked here. Fixed costs are $65,000 per month, so let's make a note of that. Fixed costs equal $65,000 per month. And the company is selling 2,750 units per month, so our volume is 2,000 
750 units. So that's what we're given. This is our given. Let's look at what's being asked of us now. Number one, required. The marketing manager argues that a $5,000 increase in the monthly advertising budget would increase monthly sales by $12,000 should the advertising budget be increased. So basically what this is saying is if we increase our fixed costs by $5,000 we will increase our sales by $12,000 and the question is yes or no. So let's start with our sales first of all. If we increase our sales by $12,000 we have a contribution margin ratio of 30 percent meaning that 30 cents of every dollar goes towards our contribution margin. So let's figure out what happens to our contribution margin. $12,000 times 0.3 equals $3,600. So our contribution margin will increase by $3,600. Less our change in fixed costs. Remember, we're increasing our fixed costs by $5,000. So we end up with $1,800 less than before we started. So our contribution margin increases, but our operating income decreases. So our answer is no, we would not do that. Let's go on to the second question. Refer to the original data. Management is considering using higher quality components that would increase the variable cost by $4 per unit. The marketing manager believes the higher quality product would increase sales by 20% per month should the higher quality components be used. Well, so what is this telling us? Number one, it's telling us that our variable cost per unit will increase by four bucks. In exchange for doing that, sales will increase 20%. Well, what does that mean? Well, we're told our volume is 2750, right? 2750. So if we multiply that by 20%, we get 550 units. So in other words, if we use higher quality components and increase our variable cost per unit by four bucks, we'll sell another 550 units or our total will be 3,300 units is what we'll now sell. So what we want to do is figure out whether we should do this or not. And the way we do this is we start with, well, what will our contribution, our new contribution margin be? And what was our old contribution margin? So our new contribution margin will be, we're selling 3,300 units. 3,300 units times, and this is where you have to have flexibility. You can recalculate a new contribution margin ratio and use that, or you could just say, you know what, I don't really need that. All I need is my contribution margin per unit and figure out a total rather than just an increment, right? So we have 3,300. Our variable costs are 63, but we're increasing it by four bucks. So that'll be 67. So our contribution margin per unit drops to 23 bucks. So 3,300 times 23 bucks gives us a new total contribution margin of 75,900. This is our new contribution margin. Now before we do any of this stuff, this is where we're at. We're selling 2,750 units, 2,750 units, and our contribution margin is $27. That will give us 74250 So the difference is $1,650. So should we do it? The answer is yes, but barely. It seems to me that this small, tiny increase, this is less than 2% increase in the contribution margin, that this small, tiny increase doesn't justify the risk of changing our product. We have a certain level of quality. We're going to increase the quality. We're going to increase the cost. That increase in quality results in an increase in volume that just barely justifies it. So that seems to be a lot of extra work just to get this small little incremental bump in sales. So even though the answer is yes, this is where computers break down and humans take over. A computer would just return yes. Where a human would look at that and say yes, but that's really not enough margin of safety 
for me to consider this as a viable alternative. It's not enough. Yes, it is a little bit more, but keep in mind, that's just a prediction. That's all it is, is just a prediction. If I'm wrong by just a bit, it actually ends up being a negative. So, don't be afraid to think.